Imagine you're standing right in front of the devil and a bunch of demons. Would you feel scared or try to fight them on your own? If you're not sure what you do in today's video, I'm going to help you handle any spiritual attack using Bible verses that even demons are afraid of. These verses can make demons shake in fear and not want you to know about them. When you say these verses out loud, no demon can stand against you. If you're curious about what these verses are, just keep watching till the end. But before we start, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell to get updates on new videos. By doing this, you'll be helping our ministry reach more people. Also, it's crucial to share this video on WhatsApp because it might save lives. There are people out there who might need help, and by sharing, you could be used by God to make a difference in their lives. Amen. Now, let's begin. In the Christian community, we don't often talk about the devil and what we should do to keep him from causing trouble in our lives. The truth is, not everyone is ready to learn about the spiritual world. Many people are scared and would rather avoid the topic altogether. That's why I asked you how you would react if you face Satan. The first thing we need to do is understand our biggest enemy so we can respond and fight wisely. Think about it. No one goes into a battle without being ready, without knowing what challenges they'll face. If they do, they'd easily lose. It's the same when it comes to dealing with the devil and his demons. One important thing to realize is that demons aren't as mighty as many people think. The truth is in 1 John 4. It says, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. See, what's inside us, brothers and sisters, is way more powerful than the devil and his demons. What's inside? The Holy Spirit of God. If we've given our lives to Jesus, but that doesn't mean we can let our guard down. Demons can bring trouble, but the good news is they aren't unbeatable. We have the authority to face them. Knowing the authority God has given us is crucial. These evil beings work in the spiritual realm looking for moments of weakness to sneak into our lives. But there's another verse that gives us tremendous power. A verse the devil hopes you won't discover. Look at James 4, 7. It says, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Isn't that interesting? Just by following this verse, You've got the key to resisting the devil and making him run far away. The first step is to submit to God. This means we have to put aside our own strength and smarts, focusing only on doing what the Lord wants. It's a crucial step to shield yourself from the traps of the devil. You might be wondering, Pastor, how do I resist the devil? The first thing is to aim for obedience to God. If you sense spiritual attacks in your life and everything seems to be going wrong, take a moment to think. Ask yourself if you're actively seeking the Lord, praying and pondering on his words. Satan doesn't want you seeking the Lord, so he'll throw traps and distractions your way to make you lose focus. That's the only way he can keep messing with your life. When we distance ourselves from the Lord's presence, we're basically opening the door for the enemy. This happens because we give in to our sinful desires. There's a rebellion in our flesh that makes us crave worldly pleasures more than spiritual things. Due to these distractions, we might feel lazy about praying, reading the Bible, or even going to church. But here's the truth. We need to feed our spirit much more than our flesh. Consider the warning from Apostle Paul. Those who live by the flesh focus on what the flesh desires, but those living by the Spirit 
focus on what the Spirit desires. But those living by the Spirit desires. A mind controlled by the flesh leads to death, but a mind controlled by the Spirit brings life and peace. It's crucial not to yield to the desires of our flesh, because by doing so, we're giving the enemy a foothold. We can't pick and choose when to obey God. It has to be in every aspect of our lives. God wants us to be completely obedient, meaning we should always seek Him. This shows the devil that we rely on the Lord. It's important to realize that our existence isn't solely the result of our efforts. It's because God allows it. You went to sleep last night and woke up this morning, not because of your own will, but because God permitted it. Many people went to sleep last night and didn't wake up today. Why? Because we have no control over what will happen. So we need to depend on the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, the authority God gives us over the evil, one comes from a life of connection with Him. And that's precisely what the enemy wants us to lose. The Bible tells us that the devil tricked Eve into eating the forbidden fruit because he wanted her to move away from a close connection with God, losing all authority. Similarly, he doesn't want you to recognize the power within you. Some people are already with God, but the enemy clouds their understanding. Others lack a connection with God, making them easily manipulated and facing significant consequences. There's an intriguing story in the Bible that shows the devil, and his demons don't want you to know about the power of obeying God. In the book of Acts, Apostle Paul performed miracles, and a group of people wanted to do the same. However, Paul, who was obedient to God, had the power and authority to cast out demons. This other group ignored the fact that obedience to God is the key to resisting evil. See what happened to those who tried to cast out demons without authority. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, attempted it. The evil spirit responded, saying they lacked the authority because they weren't obedient to God like Jesus and Paul. Trying to face evil without obedience, that group faced serious problems. They suffered, had their clothes torn, and ran away naked and wounded. They entered a spiritual battle without knowledge, faith, or a connection with God, heading toward defeat. Understanding our enemy is crucial, as we'll need to decide whether to use God's authority or let the enemy act in our lives. That's why I made this video, so you can remember James 4. Zem, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen. The key, brothers and sisters, lies in obedience. Jesus said that when we obey his word, he stays with us and answers our prayers. We belong to the Lord, and he watches over us. We can't be friends with the world. We must live in obedience. To wrap up, I want to share a psalm to keep in your heart and declare during times of fear and spiritual attacks. It says, Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many say God won't deliver him, but you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. I call out to the Lord, and he answers me. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear, though. Tens of thousands assail me on every side. Hallelujah, my brother. Make this psalm your prayer. Believe that God is with you, protecting you, granting you deliverance. Start seeking the Lord's presence from today. Amen. Sending you a big hug.